Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to see the numpy's function which are used to create arrays in Python. So let's get started. So first of all, we have to import numpy and we'll import numpy as a alias name that is np. Then we'll create a variable and now we are going to create an array with zeros. So for that we'll use the zeros function and first of all we'll create 1d array. So we'll write 4 here and and for printing the array we have to uh, write the variable name also and when we'll execute the code you will see a array with 4 zeros has been printed and its dimension is so you can see using the ndim attribute we have printed the dimension and it is printing one because it is a one dimensional array so in this way we can create one dimensional arrays of zeros now we can create two dimensional arrays also so for creating two dimensional arrays we have to first take a list and then inside the list we have to give the number of that how many rows and columns we want so I want two rows and three columns and when I execute the code you will see that two rows and three columns arrays of zeros has been printed. So this was it for the zeros function. Now we'll move to the next function that is the ones function. I'll just simply copy paste it because everything will be same and just here from zeros it will change to one now if i'll write four and i'll execute the code you will see that a array with four elements has been printed of ones and again we can create a two dimensional array also so i'll show you that it is a one dimensional array using the ndim attribute and yes it is showing one and we can create two dimensional arrays also the process will be same we will take the square braces and then we will give the number of rows and columns and when we will print it you will see that number of that three rows and four columns arrays of ones has been printed now we'll move to the next function that is the i so again we will just copy paste it and we'll just change from zero to i what does this function does i'll show you with the example I have written 4 and when I'll execute the code you will see that the diagonal diagonally once has been printed and rest of the elements are 0 so what happens when we use the i function that diagonally it gives 1 so suppose when I'll change its from 4 to 3 so 3 ones diagonally will be printed and the rest of the elements of that array will be 0 so this is uh, a three by three rows and three columns means three by three array or you can say matrix because it is because we have given only three here so if i write five here so it will print five rows and five columns matrix so when we'll put single number here or single digit so it will print an square matrix and when we want to put an or give an rectangle matrix so we have to give it uh, using so we have to give it two numbers so suppose if i want three rows and four columns uh, i matrix or i array so what i will do i'll just write three comma four now in this we don't need to give square braces we just give it three comma four and it will print three uh, three row and four column array now what is happening here you will see that if it is not a square uh, array or matrix that's why these ones are not getting properly so you can see it's not uh, they are not in proper diagonal shape so that's what uh, its drawback is now we'll see a separate diagonal function for creating diagonal arrays so for this we are going to write here diag 
that is stands for diagonal and what we can do inside it when we'll put the numbers or the elements inside this diagonal and when we'll print it what will happen the numbers which we have entered will be diagonally inserted into our array and rest of the elements of the array will be zero so suppose we can so there are four five six so we'll see that three by three array has been printed and the numbers which we have entered or the elements which we have entered are getting inserted in our array diagonally you can see first four then five then six if we'll increase the elements then also it will be same diagonally you will you can see here four five six seven eight then four then five now we'll move to the next function which is for printing the random integers so for that we will just change here and we have to write here np dot random dot rand int this function is for printing random integers and this uh, function takes three uh, values that is first one is the minimum where to start from so next one is the max and then the total number of values so i'll show you how it is done so i'll give one here then i'll give five and then i'll give five here and when i'll execute the code you will see that the random integers are getting printed and the total value of that integer is five so if i'll change to six so you will see that six elements is getting printed randomly and the value of that elements uh, will be starting from one to five and each time i'll execute the code the numbers will be different so you can see here so when i'll increase the value to 10 and i want six elements or five elements and when i execute the code you will see each time the values will be different so this is for the random integers now we will move, we will move forward to the next function that is the uh, random dot rand function so we have to simply just change here to rand and then it only takes one value so we'll give five here and when we'll execute the code you will see that an array of five elements has been created and all the elements will range from zero to one so because they are ranging from zero to one so the values of the elements will be uh, in float only so you can change the value also to eight and when you will print the dimension of this array so you will see it is one dimensional you can print two dimensional also so for printing two dimensional we don't need to do anything we just simply need to give comma that we need three rows and four columns arrays of random of rand means from ranging from zero to one and when you execute the code you will see that three rows and four columns array has been printed and each element is ranging from zero to one so this was it now we'll see the next function which is the random n random n so what happens in this function we'll see now this function also takes only one value and when we will execute the code you will see that three elements has been printed now what happens in this function that this function gives nearest to the one where uh, oh, sorry nearest to the zero value means the numbers can be negative or can be positive but the numbers will be nearest to the zero so all the numbers you are seeing that this is minus zero then at last is also minus zero then there is one they all are nearest to the zero so suppose i want eight numbers so you will see that all the numbers will range nearest to the zero and they can be negative and positive too so this was this function now we'll move to the last function that is lin space now what does this function does so i'll show you with the example
Now this function also takes three parameters that are from starting, that where to start from, that where to end, and then that how many elements you want. So suppose I want four elements, so I'll give four here, and then I'll call my variable in which I have stored it, and you will see that I have given here start from one, end to five, and then I want four elements, so I've given four. So you will see that first element is one and the last element is five and the these two middle elements are 2.33 and 3.66. Now why these elements are 2.3 and 3.666? Because what happens when we use this function? These functions uh, separate these four elements in such a way that the ring that the difference between the two elements will be always same means the difference between this 2.3 and 1 is same as the difference from 2.3 to 3.6 is also same and the difference from 3.6 to 5 is also same so this function uh, separates the differences in equal way so suppose if i'll increase this and i'll increase the the end point to 10 and I'll give the number of required elements also 10. So what will happen? You will see it will print the integers because it uh, now you will see that uh, the difference between each element or the difference between two elements are one. So this element is also very useful. So thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next video.